guys welcome to my channel thanks so much for being part of this channel today i'm here to give you a summary of us about school and we are in lesson 11 which is titled deuteronomy in the later writings deuteronomy in the late our key test is taken from deuteronomy 10 15 and i read the lord delighted only in your fathers to love them and he chose their descendants after them you above all peoples as it is this day amen when we go into the bible we could see that in the new testament some of the writers who quote from the old testament and base their writings on or to make a point is the same thing that in the old testament to some of the prophets or the writers who quote some of the old testament writings to make a point or explain something and so this week we will focus on how the book was used by later writers. What part of Deuteronomy did they use? And what point were they making that have relevance for us today? And so we are going to look at how some of the Bible writers quoted the book of Deuteronomy to make a point or to explain something. Sunday talks about the book of the law, the book of the law. And the Sunday lesson is based on second kings 22 the sunday lesson is about um king josiah when he became a king and at a point wanted to rebuild the temple of god or clean the house of the lord and then the priest hilkiah found the book of the law and then it was given to the king the king sent him to go and inquire from a prophet what the words of the book means and we are going to read from we are going to read second kings 22 verse 12. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Hikam, the son of Shaphan, Archbor, the son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us, because our fathers have not obey the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us so he hired the priest ahikam archbor shafan and asaiah went to huda the prophetess the wife of shalom the son of tigva the son of hahas keeper of the wardrobe she dwelt in jerusalem in the second quarter and they spoke with her then she said to them that says the Lord God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me. That says the Lord, behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they are forsaking me and bend incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall be and shall not be quenched and so when they went to make an inquiry the prophetess said god is angry and is going to bring punishment on his people because they've worshipped other gods they they did not what obey him but one thing he said was that because josiah was ready to do the will of god because he, he sought one thing was that as for Josiah, he's going to be spared. The Bible says that because when he heard the news, his heart was tender, he humbled himself and re was ready to know more and do the will of God. God was going to spare him. His eyes will not see those calamities. God will let him die a peaceful death. The lesson is drawing our attention to the fact that most scholars believe that this book of the law was Deuteronomy that the people came into contact with because we know that when Israel was about to enter into the promised land God repeated his law and everything his instructions through Moses in the book of Deuteronomy the sister white from sister white in prophet and kings page 393 says Joseph was deeply stirred as he had read for the first time the exhortations and warnings recorded in this ancient manuscript never before had he realized so fully the plainness with which god has set before israel life and death blessing and cursing the book abounded in assurance of god's willingness to save to the uttermost those who should place their trust fully in him 
as he had wrought in their deliverance from Egyptian bondage, so would he work mightily in establishing them in the land of promise and in placing them at the head of the nations of earth. Amen. And so Josiah was tender-hearted. He humbled himself when he heard that this law is there. Actually, there was a book like this that God is so plain about it, about as stated his law so clearly and not mixing with his words. And so he knowing that God has stated his law this way, but his people have gone astray doing their own things, broke his heart. Deuteronomy was filled with warnings and admonitions against following the practice of the nations around them, the actions of Josiah and all the things that he did, which included the execution of what must have been idolatrous priests in Samaria, revealed just how far the people of God had strayed from the truth and trusted to them. Instead of remaining the instead of remaining the holy people they were supposed to be, they compromised with the world, even though they often thought we are just fine with the Lord. Thank you. And so Josiah went ahead to execute all those um, uh, prophets of Baal, all those fetish priests, people have what? Entangled themselves with idol worshippers. He, 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 he killed, he made sure that all those people will be wiped away because God's people are to what? Remain holy. Monday talks about the heaven of heavens, the heaven of heavens. Deuteronomy makes it so clear that the law and the covenant were central not only to Israel's relationship to God but also to the nations and so the book of Deuteronomy was given to the people for them to know their relationship with God or how they are to relate with God but also was given to them that while they obey the instructions people around them will also come to us to know God we are going to read Deuteronomy 10 12 to 15 and I read and now Israel what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his status, which I command you today for your good. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them you above all peoples as it is this day and so the lord of heavens the the book of deuteronomy is also introducing god as the creator as the owner of everything and so israel at what worship him they need to obey him because he, he owns everything he created them he chose their fathers and he has extended that grace to them what heaven of heavens means isn't absolutely clear at least in this immediate context but moses is pointing to the majesty power and grandeur of god that is not only heaven itself but also the heaven of he of the heavens belongs to him most likely an idiomatic expression that points to god's complete sovereignty over all the creation and so when you go to first kings 8 verse 27 nehemiah 9 says and psalm 148 verse 4 all these bible verses also quote the same thing that was said in deuteronomy about god being the lord of heaven of heavens or he being in control of the heaven of heavens and so we are going to read first kings 8 verse 27 but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built? And Psalm 148 verse 4 also reads, Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Nehemiah 9 verses also reads, You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. Amen. And so it's also stated it clearly that God is the owner of everything. He created the heaven of heavens and everything that we see. Especially clear in Nehemiah 9 is a theme 
of God as the creator and the one who alone should be worshipped. He made everything, even the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts. And so if God made everything, he is in control. Whom do we worship? He and he alone. We move to Tuesday. We talk about Deuteronomy in Jeremiah. Deuteronomy in Jeremiah. And when we read Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it reads, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And this was said in Deuteronomy 4 verse 29 and jeremiah also repeated the same thing we are going to read deuteronomy 4 verse 23 to 29 take heed to yourself lest you forget the covenant of the lord your god which he made with you and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the lord your god has forbidden you for the lord your god is a consuming fire a jealous god when you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it but will but will be utterly destroyed and the lord will scatter you among the peoples and you will be left few in number among the nations where the lord will drive you and there you will serve gods the work of men's hands wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell but from there you will seek the lord your god and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. I mean, so in Deuteronomy 4, it's telling the people that as you are entering this land, you people will be comfortable that you forget me and you start worshiping other gods and I will scatter you. And when I scatter you and you people come back to your senses and you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Jeremiah also repeated the same thing. As we already have seen, the book of Deuteronomy had been rediscovered during the reign of king josiah and it was under josiah's rule that jeremiah began his ministry no wonder then that the influence of deuteronomy can be seen in the writings of jeremiah it's so clear that the book was discovered in his time and so that book will have influence on him or on his um, words so because of that in jeremiah 7 verse 1 to 7 you see jeremiah calling the people to, to amend their ways calling the people to obedience you are going to read some few verses says, the word that came to jeremiah from the lord saying stand in the gate of the lord's house and proclaim there this and proclaim there this word and say hear the word of the lord all you of judah who enter in at these gates to worship the lord that says the lord of hosts the god of israel amend your ways and your doings and i will cause you to dwell in this place do not trust in this lying way, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk, or walk after other gods to your heart, then... I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Amen. And so he was calling them, amend your ways, be justice, stay away from idol worshippers, and do what is right before God. Jeremiah, because he coming into contact with the book of Deuteronomy, had influence on his life, that God called him to, to speak to the people, to amend their ways, calling them to, what, to obedience. Again and again in Deuteronomy, Moses stressed how the Israelites' existence in the land of Canaan was conditional and that if they disobeyed, they would not remain in the place that God had chosen for them. Look at the particular warning in Jeremiah 7 verse 4. The implication being that, yes, this was God's temple and yes, 
they were the chosen people but none of that matter if they weren't obedient so it doesn't matter how active you are in the house of god it doesn't matter how uh, you always been at church and you always been involved if you don't obey god if you are not showing love towards others if you don't care for the fatherless if you are not giving right judgments you are not obeying god and god will not take it lightly with you we are going to read jeremiah 4 verse 4 okay, circumcise yourself to the lord and take away the foreskins of your heart you men of judah and inhabitants of jerusalem lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings and so in jeremiah 4 verse 4 it says that she was circumcised there Heart is the same way when you go to Deuteronomy 30 verses, it also reads, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendant to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Amen. And so just as in Deuteronomy, God was calling the people to circumcise their heart or telling them that he will circumcise their heart. It's the same way in Jeremiah 4, 4, he's calling them to also what? circumcise their heart when is it talks about what does the lord require what does the lord require so much of the writings of the prophet consisted of appeals to faithfulness and not just faithfulness in general but in particular faithfulness to the israelites end of the covenant which was reaffirmed just before they end just before they entered the land and so god has kept his promise he has kept his part of the covenant he's calling his people to also what keep their part of the covenant by what obeying him moses admonished the people to fulfill their end as well indeed much of the writings of the prophets was basically the same appeals for the people to uphold their side of the covenant is the same way god is appealing to us today to to uphold our side of the covenant you are going to read some few verses of micah says or micah says verse 1 to 8 hear now that the lord says arise plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice hear oh you mountains the lord's complaint and you strong foundations of the earth for the Lord has a complaint against his people, and he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Testify against me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of bondage, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, counseled, and what Balaam, son of Baal, answered him, from Acacia Grove to Gilga, that you may know the righteousness of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the son of my soul? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. And so God said, I'm going to contend with you. Imagine God taking you to court. Who is going to be your lawyer? Because the lawyer and judge himself is the one taking you to court. How are you going to contend with him god is going to contend with his people because he has kept his part of the covenant but they are refusing to keep their part of the covenant and when we read maker we find this there it is the same way when we go to deuteronomy we'll see the, those words there because micah or micah borrowed those words from deuteronomy so notice to how micah borrows language directly from deuteronomy and now israel what does the lord your god require of you but to fear the lord your god to walk in all his ways and to love him to serve the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the commandments of the lord and his status which i command you today for your good deuteronomy 10 12 and 13 and so michael or micah repeated these words to let them know that all that the lord is requiring of them is nothing 
but what obey them it's not asking them to bring their first ones it's not asking them to sacrifice all their animals to give them everything but what to obey them don't go to this place you don't go don't worship idols you don't worship obey obedience and that is what god requires of us today what seems to be happening here is that whatever the outward appearance of religion and piety that's not what constitutes israel's covenant relationship with god what good is all this outward piety if for example they covet fields and take them by violence also houses and seize them so they oppress a man and his house and his house a man and his inheritance israel was supposed to be a light to the world about which the nations would say with wonder surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people hence they were to act with wisdom and with understanding which included treating people with justice and mercy and so god was asking them to live right you can make all the sacrifices you can give all your wealth to god to the church to build you can build mansions cathedral and whatsoever for god but if you don't obey him if you don't care for the poor if you don't do what is right before him especially those things we think oh it's nothing no matter the cathedral no matter the sacrifice god is not pleased with it when we come to thursday it talks about daniel's prayer daniel's prayer and we are going to look at daniel's prayer in deuteronomy or how daniel quoted deuteronomy in his prayer when we read Daniel 9 verse 1 to 90, we see a long prayer that Daniel prayed there, seeking for forgiveness for his people because they have not what obeyed God. Daniel's prayer is a summary of exactly what the nation had been warned about in Deuteronomy regarding the fruit of not keeping their end of the covenant. Twice Daniel referred back to the law of Moses, which certainly included Deuteronomy and in this case might have been specifically referring to it. And so Daniel said they have not what kept the law of Moses, the law God gave to Moses to give to his people. They have not kept it. They have broken the law. So it was pleading on behalf of the people that thought God should forgive them. We will read Daniel 9 verse 11 it says yes all israel has transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of moses the servant of god have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him and so daniel quoted deuteronomy that is the book of the law and it's specifically deuteronomy because before the people were going to enter the land god repeated all his law to them and told them if you don't obey these are the cases that will come upon you and daniel was saying yes we are facing all those cases because we did not obey but and perhaps more important daniel's prayer expressed the reality that despite this event there was hope god had not abandoned them no matter how much it might have seemed that way deuteronomy not only provided a contest for understanding their situation but it also pointed to the promise of restoration as well amen and so in their prayer daniel prayed because you know that there is still hope even though they have gone their own way the people have sinned against god and punishment has come upon them there is still hope if they turn their heart if they seek god they will find god to conclude the lesson with a quote from sister white in friday it says in the reformation that followed the king josiah turned his attention to the destruction of every vestige of idolatry that remained so long had the inhabitants of the land followed the customs of the surrounding nations in in bowing down to images of wood and stone that it seemed almost beyond the power of man to remove every trace of these evils but josiah preserved in his effort to cleanse the land ellen g white prophet and king's page 401 and so josiah was keen on what cleansing the land bringing restoration or bringing reformation 
to the land again there is still hope no matter how you are falling no matter how far you are gone there is still hope the bible in deuteronomy and also repeated in jeremiah makes us understand that if we see god with all our heart we will find him so we should mend our ways we should come back to god for he's ready to, to accept us and restore us and also reform us thanks so much for watching if you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Like and share this video. You might touch a heart by sharing this video. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.